Well, we're back talking more about our 2018 Moab build uh, on our new 1000 Razor. And one of the things that topics that kept coming up is which clutch to run or which clutch upgrades. And I went out on a ride and uh, Adam with SLP was starting line products was our tour guide on one of the trail rides. And I was really impressed with the performance of your machine. We got to talking and next thing I know, uh, we're going to put uh, SLP clutch upgrades. Is that the right terminology? Yeah, yeah, clutch upgrade, clutch kit. That's right, Chuck. So we had an awesome time on the ride. Absolutely. It was fun meeting you guys and getting around your, your vehicles. Uh, one thing we really like about this turbo car is the performance that the car makes. It's great uh, performance out of the engine. But one thing it lacks is getting that performance from the engine to the ground. And so that's where we come in. Our clutch kits uh, are an upgrade that utilize the stock components, but maximize the performance of those components and, and get you that performance to the ground. Uh, the acceleration is, uh, is better. Uh, it's much, much smoother and less friction on the whole system. Uh, it's just easier to drive because the, the, the throttle input is a lot more intuitive. You don't have to use so much throttle to get the car to move. So just and, an overall better performing setup. And then a little bit about your company that give me a lot of comfort. Is there an Idaho company and you've been around sure. since 72? Yep. yep, yep, 1972. We opened our doors for business there in Idaho Falls, Idaho. And we've been tuning on CBT clutches ever since. So this is not something new for us. Uh, back in 2008 when the Razor first came out, we saw this and said, this is an awesome vehicle. And it, what a ride for the last 10 years, you know. Oh, yeah. It's been I mean, amazing just look, where, look where at we've the, come, the money you know. And the, the and, uh, what great vehicles we have to ride now. It's just, it's just a pleasure to be in the industry doing what we're doing. Well, one of the things we're going to do is, uh, as Adam tears our clutch apart, we're going to try to document it. And one of the things that I want to achieve is kind of showing uh, people how to change a clutch, or a belt, rather, sure. while they're on the trail. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first step is to get the screws out, and uh, I like this tool the best for doing that. It's got a flexible shaft, so you can get in and around all the obstacles. That... And, and this is something you offer. It is, this is something that we sell. Um, it's pretty cool because it's got a reversible socket. The one side is for the hose clamp, so you can remove the hose clamp that goes to your air duct here. Sure. And then the other side, you flip it over, and that side is the screw head. So it, it, it's one tool that does both of the, the pieces. It's really slim, so you can throw it in in your tool kit. Absolutely. So you have it with you if you need to change your belt while you're on the trail. It's, it's really easy to, to do it. Sounds great. Right tools you need. So the next piece that you need uh, to get the belt off is this tool here. Uh, this comes in your tool kit. It's just a little L wrench that's threaded. It goes into one of these two holes. And the way it works is you just insert the tip and then just thread the tool in. And that's depressing something in the clutch? Yeah, what it's doing is it's going to spread these sheaves apart so that uh, you have more gap between them. And you'll, you'll see as I start to spread the sheaves, the belt drops down. And so you're just making more space for the belt to be able to move so that you can get it out. And you just twist it in until you've got plenty of space and room for that belt to move. Once you get it in that far, you just pull on the bottom here of the belt and just work it around like that. And once you've got it all the way around, you just pop it around off the top. And then from there, you just work the belt around that drive clutch. And it just doesn't work. So when people want to upgrade their own clutch, do they send it to you or do you have how-to videos? Yeah, they, they can either do it on their own at home or if they have the proper tools, of course, you need to buy all the, the service tools. Uh, or you can pop off the clutches and send them in to us, either way works fine. Okay. So to remove the driven clutch, uh, the first step is to just pop out this bolt. Once you get the bolts out, there's this uh, snap ring that you've got to remove. That's just kind of a secondary measure that they have to keep the clutch in place. Well, with the aid of a little movie magic, <laughs> we got the tire off. 
going to try to get a little more light in here. When I say we're doing this on the show floor, I mean we are doing this as grass roots as it gets right here on the show floor. And then we're going to go try this bad boy out. Try not to show me jumping. <laughs> that was, that was tight. If a guy backed that one bolt out, would that help prevent that? drive clutch, uh, there are a couple of things that you need to do. Uh, first off, you'll take out this bolt right here. Uh, that's just the drive clutch retaining bolt. Uh, after you remove that bolt, uh, then you thread a puller in through the hole, and uh, then the clutch will pop off. So you got to put something in the clutch to hold it. We actually have a tool that does that, but I don't have it. on the end uh, so that it doesn't uh, so that it doesn't uh, damage the tip of the puller. I'll also put a little bit of grease right on the threads so that it's easy for it to go in. The way this puller works is there are threads here that thread directly into the clutch and the inner side of this hole in the clutch and then the tip which is against the crankshaft on the engine and then it forces it off. There's a taper fit between the clutch here on the back side of the center and the crankshaft at the edge. So after we put the puller in, uh, you just tighten the puller until it pops, and it will make an audible pop. Uh, the first time you do it, it'll probably make you soil yourself, but that's normal. Don't worry, that's typical. Uh, but once you get the primary clutch off, uh, you're ready to go with the rest of the clutch kit. Now that we've got the clutches off, uh, we're going to run over to the trailer and uh, dig into them and uh, do what we do with, with the magic of, of making these clutches really perform. I also want to point out it's 6 o'clock at night and everybody's still going. People are upgrading machines as you can see over here. Now we're going to go over to the SLP trailer. You can see they've got machines lined up and they're doing clutches on them here at the rally which is quite impressive.
So now that we're back at the trailer with the clutch off, we're going to dig into installing the clutch kit. There are three main components that are part of the kit. Uh, the first is our magnum force weights. Uh, these give you the maximum amount of shift force on the belt to make sure that it rips the belt and doesn't slip. Uh, we've also got an SLP spring uh, that's specific to the kit, as well as our uh, power pucks that help to make it smooth and no friction in the clutch as it shifts. So the next thing we're going to put in is the clutch weights. Uh, these give you adjustability and also control the shift of the, of the drive clutch. We removed the factory weights. So there's a significant difference. And you guys make these? Yeah, we manufacture that. Now, are there different weights for different elevations? Uh, no, there's one weight. It's adjustable, so you can use it for a variety of elevations with the uh, provided set screws. Uh, these screws are added through the end of the weight right here. Okay. You, you screw them in with the T-handle, and that gives you adjustment to run from low elevation all the way up to high elevation with the same clutch weight. And uh, you're going to show me how to set that, right? Yeah, I will. Now, is there something you bonded in here that needs to dry overnight? Yeah, so there's an adhesive that we put this the power pucks in with. It's an elastomeric rubber. And uh, we we put that in the on the clutch to, to keep it in place. Um, and that'll dry overnight. And so then, I'm good to go tomorrow yeah, with it? Yeah, you'll be good to go tomorrow with it, for sure. We've got the weights and spring installed and we are good to go. We're going to go put this back on the car. Yeah. So I like to clean out the uh, taper of the clutch in here before I reinstall it just to make sure no dirt or anything got on the clutch taper. It has to have a perfect seal between the clutch taper and the crankshaft. So you want to also clean out the crankshaft right here. You see there's a little bit of grease here too. Clean that up. I'm also going to stick this down inside here to get some of that out of there too. Make sure that's nice and clean. What's the biggest leading cause of burning a clutch? Is it? The main reason that people uh, have problems with their clutch is they'll put it in high gear and then do something that's a high load. Uh, that would be like running through a, you know, a big mud pit or running up a, a really super steep hill uh, or trying to rock crawl. Uh, anytime that you feel like you need to be in four wheel drive, you really ought to be in low gear. What about, does it matter when you're sitting on a hill like and you're in drive? Is there any load on it? Or does it change if you put it in neutral? Um, if you're just sitting there, it should be the same, right? No, that's not, you don't have to worry about burning a belt if you're just sitting in, you know, parked. Right. You're, you're not going to burn a belt. And then when you're coming off a hill, does it help to give it just a little acceleration to set yeah, the belt? Yeah, it, it does. What happens is when you're accelerating, you're forcing this clutch to close, and that grips the belt, and it engages the transmission through the secondary clutch, so you actually get um, an 
engine brake effect. Sure. From revving it up a little bit. It seems backwards, right? You rev it up and you think that you're gonna go faster down the hill, but if you rev it just a little bit, it'll just keep the clutch engaged and it'll actually go slower down the hill. You won't have to hit your brakes as much. And in your opinion, I mean, obviously, there are higher quality belts on the market and lower quality, but... You know, the best belt that we have found is the Polaris OE really? belt. It, it works the best. They designed it to work with the machine. Yeah. And you know, what we found is a lot of the aftermarket belts out there um, uh, claim to be more durable, and they are. They're, they're definitely more durable, uh, but it typically comes at a cost. Uh, an aftermarket belt is typically a harder compound rubber that's not as grippy. And so it, it doesn't wear out, but it just doesn't grip the, sure. the clutches as well, so it doesn't perform as well, and uh, you'll typically not have as good a performance out of it. That goes back to Newton's law, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite yeah. reaction. Yeah. you put the belts on. Otherwise you'll be pushing against the belt and you won't get an accurate torque reading. So after you've torqued this uh, front bolt, it's a good idea to check it again. Um, maybe after you go on a ride. Uh, this sometimes will take a little bit of a set on that tapered fit, and so you, you got to do it uh, again. What do I torque it to? 96 foot-pounds. Okay. Yeah, now when you put the belt on, you're going to always want to make sure that you can read the label. You can obviously read Polaris and the part number here, and so we're going to make sure that when we put this on, that it stays that way. So that... So that you can read that Polaris and the part number just while you're putting this on. Just pushing the belt up in the bottom here as I'm opening it. as you spin it to lift this back part up and make sure to kind of pull away as you, as you lift it up so you're not going to ruin those cogs in the belt. You can just work it around like that to so move it in. Then pull your tool back out. And spin this to take up that slack in the belt. Once your belt is riding up at the top of the clutch, you're good. Ready to go back on with the cover, and, uh, and that's it for the clutch kit. Ready awesome. to roll. Well, here we are. The clutch is on. I mean, tomorrow's going to be, uh, I'm really looking forward to Hell's Revenge tomorrow to try the new clutch, and I'm just so excited. You're absolutely going to love it, Chuck. Uh, that clutch is just going to go right up those obstacles. You're not even going to think twice about it. And I want to compliment you. You know, I don't know what time you started this morning, but I think it's now, uh, it, it's 8 o'clock at night, and you've been going hey, nonstop. Uh, we have been going nonstop. I'm super excited to get to bed tonight. Uh, I think our, our booth over here is finally, all the cars are out of it. That's the first time 
<laughs> since we got here on Monday. I'm really excited. Last night was a late one. It was 11.30 tonight. I think we're going to get in about 7.30, so I'm pretty happy. Well, I'll tell you, I, I can't thank you enough. What, no a, what a pleasure it's been. Pleasure so looking forward to many more builds with you. So thanks a lot. Sounds good. Thanks.